Good Monday morning! This is Fun Fun Function, a Monday morning show where we try to become more excited and confident about programming by exploring old wisdom, wild ideas and having fun. Last Monday's video was about funk tours and in that video I mentioned that this video would be about streams because streams are funk. And that turned out to be a lie. Not that streams are funk tours, they are. Uh, but uh, I just don't have the time to make a proper video this week. These videos, I don't, I don't talk too much about the production process of these videos, but the um, the videos, including script and editing and everything, takes uh, like six hours at best, but mostly they take around 12 hours of effective time. You know, with Christmas, you always figure that oh, this is. Oh, like I don't have any work so I will have all this time to do things and I can record videos and that's not how it works family arrives and I have to make meatballs and it, yeah there's no way I have the time to make a full-fledged video but I want to make a video so I figured why not just try a QA? and a I have some questions uh, that I picked out from uh, Twitter and uh, YouTube and I figured that I would just go through them and see if I don't know, something interesting arises. What is your favorite JavaScript IDE? None. I'm a recovering tooling alcoholic. Uh, whenever I find myself using a tool, uh, like any tool, it could be a piece of to-do software, I just get caught up in the tool. Uh, if I start using tags in email software, I spend like this enormous amount of ta time uh, doing this elaborate tagging system and developing that. I do that way more than actually reading emails. And for me, IDEs and text editors and stuff like that work just the same. If I start going down that rabbit hole, I find myself uh, just optimizing, optimizing, optimizing and making myself more efficient in the future. That is why I use uh, a just plain Atom with almost no plugins at all uh, because that is just to prevent myself from getting into that dark place of just not getting anything done. I tried using Vim for quite a while. I really got comfortable with it, but the problem was that I to get Vim to a position where you can use it in your daily work. Yeah, you have to work quite a bit of quite a bit with it, and that time is. It's time I could spend doing things. I don't necessarily encourage not using any plugins, but uh, I just can't do it. What are your thoughts on Ramda.js? Oh, I really like Ramda. Um, it's uh, for you who don't know, Ramda is uh, a. Uh, it's sort of the same thing as Lodash or underscore, but it is extremely heavily angled towards functional programming. So it basically allows you to do a lot of Haskell-y and closure -y things in, uh, in JavaScript. I really like it, and it's, uh, it's really sleek. Why is it important to learn Haskell? Not entirely sure if it is important to learn Haskell. I think it's important to learn, and to learn a lot of things. I'm not sure if I'm a great programmer, but I'm sure that I do spend a lot of time with great programmers uh, at work and the people I meet. And all of the people that I consider to be amazing programmers, they tend to have, they tend to be kind of everywhere intellectually. They do have a specialization and something that they are really good at. It just seems very important to just expand your mind and know a lot of things in order to be good at one thing. You need to not get stuck in that single thing and expand your horizons constantly into other things. And, take that stuff back into what you're doing. You look like Keanu Reeves. Whoa, dude. Whoa. I, I don't know. Are you thinking about going all out TypeScript? I think, yeah, but... I think TypeScript is fine. It's not my thing. I've been looking at Rust lately and it is just amazing to work with. It's so much fun and the, the type system just helps you out so much. And uh, also looking at Haskell, there's a type system there that is just amazingly cool. But with that said, I think that types in programming in general, there's a, 
over belief in them. I think there are things in programming that are objectively good and almost always a good idea no matter what you do. Unit testing is one such thing. Version control. Types? Eh. When I use typed languages, I feel like, oh, this is helping me out so much. Why don't I use this all the time? And then I uh, do this other thing and the type system just gets oh, in the way. Uh, and I have to spend a lot of time like coercing the type system and getting it to do what I want to do. It's a nice tool, but I, um, for me, it's, I don't know, it's a tool. Do you have any thoughts about using Mocha for JS testing? Mocha is probably still the best choice for uh, unit testing. Um, I use tape right now for, um, for a personal project of mine. Uh, and I like it because it has a certain, like it feels very native to Node while there's a bit of magic going on with Mocha. But I think still like it doesn't offer enough advantage over Mocha in order to be like a valuable switch because everybody's used to Mocha. But I'm still frustrated that you don't have something better than Mocha by now. Mocha has been around ages. I wish somebody would do something cool and revolutionary with unit testing. While I was uh, involved in Ruby and the Ruby on Rails community, like they did a lot of stuff with testing there all the time and everybody just figured, constantly figured out how to do testing better. Uh, and I think that that is really lacking in the JavaScript community and I find that a bit, a bit frustrating. Can you talk about the importance of making your code legible and tips for doing so? That's like 10 episodes worth of material. Yes, don't make your code clever. It's so alluring to be smart when you're a programmer. You just figure out cooler and cooler and cooler ways and terser and terser and terser ways. I've never <laughs> entered a project or like uh, uh, gone into a new code base and said, Wow, I really appreciate all this meta programming going on. That that doesn't happen. To me, the best code is often code that just seems dumb. Just seems like anybody could have written it. But the truth is that being able to write that kind of code takes a lot of discipline and experience. When you find code that is written in very very smart ways with a lot of optimization and and meta programming, that code is very often written by more intermediate programmers who have not yet started to appreciate like, the value of code that is really easy to maintain. Maintain and understand, because in order to maintain something, you need to understand it. What are your thoughts on ES6 classes? If you've followed me for a while, you, you know by now that I'm not a fan of classes. It's not like I think that they should never be used. It's just that I see them being used so often, but I guess I, I guess if you absolutely absolutely just are hellbent on using classes uh, You uh, I guess it's good that they are in the language so that people don't do these weird Everybody does their own implementation. I prefer not to use classes if I can. What foreign languages do you know? I know Swedish that's foreign to you. Hey, hey, got follow svenska I uh, know English, that's foreign to me. And uh, I know a little bit of German. Learning a bit of Portuguese at the moment because I'm going to uh, Brazil in August. Everyone says use the best tools for the job. But how do you determine that if you don't know all the available tools? Yeah, I guess the um, use the best tool for the job advice is sort of like the dating advice of be yourself. It's uh, not super helpful in itself. In my mind, I think that ideally your tech choices for a project should be divided into two phases. The first phase should be your exploration, right? You, you have this project, uh, you want to do it, uh, and in that, in that phase you should use just the tool that you're familiar with that is as generic as possible. Use PHP, JavaScript. Uh, Java or whatever don't like, don't concern yourself whether or not it's suitable and the reason is that you have no idea about where this 
project is going to take you. You're not even sure if you're building the right product or not. Or if you are, you're not sure exactly how it's going to look or what the demands of it are going to be. So no matter what tool you pick, it's going to be the wrong tool. It's going to be suboptimal. So you might as well pick a tool that you're really familiar with. When you run into problems, at least you'll know all the nooks and crannies of the tool because you're familiar with it and you'll be able to exploit it in weird ways. Over time, as you get more familiar with the project or your set of problems, like for instance, like say that you're implementing in a event-based system or something, or rather you, maybe it wasn't event-based from the start, it just turned event-based during your development. And because you've now accidentally gotten into event-based programming, you will now be reading blog posts and stuff and forums about uh, event-based programming. You will start to gradually become more familiar with how the programming community is solving this problem and what tooling is arising out of it. I really like to use Twitter as an example. They just started out building Twitter as a side project using Ruby on Rails and over time when they learned uh, their problem domain they eventually moved to a, a, Scala, a Scala backend. But there was no way for them to know that that, what, that is what they needed from the start because they they probably didn't know that Scala existed. I'm not even sure if Scala existed when Twitter started out. Either way, you start out with what you know, uh, and once you learn the problem domain, start getting into that problem domain on the internet, and I promise that you'll figure it out. That's it. I, I hope there was some kind of useful nugget in there for some of you. In the next episode, we will do streams. Uh, <laughs> As usual, that episode will be released Monday morning, 0800 GMT. Do not miss it, write it on your forehead so that you'll see it in the mirror when you awake in the morning. Until next Monday morning, stay curious.